Classic Tales, Arabian Nights. Chapter 7 The Fisherman's Tale Continued. After finishing the story of the Greek king and the physician Doban, the fisherman told the genie that they were in the same situation. If only the king had spared Doban, he wouldn't have died. Now, the same applied to the genie because if he intended to kill the fisherman, he would throw the jar back into the sea. The genie promised the fisherman that if he was willing to open the jar lid, he would make him rich. The fisherman agreed and opened the jar. Once free, the genie immediately kicked the vase into the sea. He then brought the fisherman to a large lake lying between four hills and told him to cast his nets and catch fish. The fisherman saw that the fishes in the lake were of different colors, white, red, blue, and yellow. He caught one of each color. The genie instructed him to bring the fish to the sultan, who would give him more money than he had ever had in his life. After that, the fisherman could return to the lake every day but must never throw his net more than once. Otherwise, harm would come to him. With these words, the genie disappeared. When the sultan saw the fish, he was astonished. After admiring them, he ordered the grand vizier to take the fish to his cook and give the fisherman 400 gold pieces. The fisherman was overjoyed. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, as the cook was preparing the fish, the walls of the kitchen suddenly opened, revealing a young and beautiful damsel dressed in an Egyptian dress of flowered satin, adorned with earrings and a necklace of white pearls and holding a wand of myrtle in her hand. She struck one of the fish with her rod and said, Fish, fish, are you doing your duty? The fishes answered, Yes, as you can see. If you pay your debts, we pay ours. The girl then upset the pan and disappeared back into the wall. When the cook lifted the pan to check the fish that had fallen into the ashes, she found them already black as cinders. Terrified that the Sultan would be angry, she told the Grand Vizier everything that had happened. The Grand Vizier summoned the fisherman and asked him to catch more of the same fish as an accident had occurred with the previous ones. The fisherman promised to bring more fish the next day. That night, he went to the lake, cast his net, and caught four more fish of different colors. He returned to the Grand Vizier as promised. The Grand Vizier took the fish to the kitchen and waited while the cook prepared them. Just as before, the damsel appeared, asked the same question to the fish, overturned the pan, and disappeared. Filled with astonishment, the Grand Vizier told the Sultan what had happened. Hearing this, the Sultan wished to see for himself, and sent the fisherman to catch more fish. The fisherman asked for three days' time, and upon his return, he received another 400 gold coins. The Sultan then took the fish to his room, prepared all the cooking arrangements, and shut himself in with the Grand Vizier, who began cooking the fish. Suddenly, the wall opened, and instead of a maiden, a tall figure with a dark complexion and carrying a large green stick appeared. He asked the fish the same question, received the same answer, and overturned the pan, turning the fish to cinders before disappearing back into the wall. Astonished, the Sultan summoned the fisherman and asked where he had caught the fish. The fisherman explained that he had caught the fish from a great lake between four hills beyond the mountains. However, even the Grand Vizier had never heard of this lake. The Sultan ordered his court to journey to the lake, with the fisherman leading them. Upon arriving at the lake, they made camp at the edge of the water. The Sultan told the Grand Vizier that he wished to journey alone to uncover the mystery and instructed the Vizier to tell everyone that the Sultan was unwell 
and did not wish to be disturbed. The vizier tried to dissuade him, but the sultan insisted. In the middle of the night, he took off his robe, silently climbed one of the hills, and crossed the great plain. As the sun rose, he saw a large building in front of him. Upon approaching, he found it to be a splendid palace of beautiful black polished marble. He entered the gate and passed through a magnificent courtyard, calling aloud but finding no one. He entered a luxurious grand hall with a fountain supported by golden lions that spewed water that turned into diamonds and pearls. Yet he still saw no one. Suddenly, he heard a cry. Oh, I wish I could die because I'm so unhappy and don't want to live anymore. The Sultan looked around until he found a handsome young man, richly clothed, sitting on a throne slightly raised from the ground, his face very sad. The Sultan approached and bowed to him. The young man bent his head but did not rise, saying, Sir, I am sorry, I cannot rise and cannot do you the reverence befitting your rank. The Sultan explained that he had heard his cry of distress and had come to offer his help, asking whose palace it was and why it was empty. The young man lifted his robe, revealing that from his waist downward, he was a block of black marble. The Sultan begged the young man to tell his story.